Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Today we'll be looking at this concept of testing or being tested or evil in the world. Many today are asking with this coronavirus going around, why all the suffering? What is happening? What is the point of all of this? Um, we refer back to Surah Al-Mulk. Uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا He's the one who's created life and death so he can test you which one of you is best in their actions but why the test? why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this test? why didn't he just create us in heaven straight away? just like the angels basically why didn't he make us angels? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a life before this one. Actually, those who are, who are angels chose to be angels. They chose not to be tested. While those who are tested in this life, us, were the ones who chose to be tested in this life. Why? Because we know that we have been given free will. The ability to choose our path. The ability to say no to bad and choose good. And that is of a higher, greatest, greater status than that of an angel who's been forced to or does not have any free will to do anything bad. So that's why in the end of the day, if we are the ones who are doing good and choosing not to do bad, we'll be above the angels on the day of judgment, inshallah, um, with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So... There's something more to it as well. For example, if you are going to a race, you're going to have a competition, and someone came and gave you the gold medal straight away. They said, that's it, you've won, you've got the gold medal. And then you look back at them and say, but I haven't even started the race. I never achieved this. I never did anything to, to achieve this gold medal. They say, no, it's okay, we just give it to you anyway. Would you feel that satisfaction as you would if you actually uh, made the effort and, and with your choice, you got to that position and you won the gold medal. Would your happiness be the same? Would your level of satisfaction be the same? No, it will not. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this test as an opportunity because he saw us as being worthy of this opportunity. And that's for you and I, every single one of us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created is because we have the choice and we are worthy of this creation. And that's why he's created us. And inshallah, there's a hadith, there's a beautiful narration which says, I have created you for heaven. That's why I've created you. So do not sell yourself short of, short of anything but heaven. Don't sell yourself short. You know, we're here in this life. Our aim should be heaven. That's why you've been created. That's our final abode. That's our final destination. That's our goal in life. Do not forget this. Um, imagine a king. A king that's wealthy and has many treasure. What he does is he, he can either just keep it to himself or he can give it to others. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did. When he created us, he wanted us to have these treasures. But does he give it to anyone and everyone? No, he gives it to only those who are worthy of it, who work for it, who also want the treasures. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open the kingdom for these individuals, you and I, inshallah, if we keep on the right path with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And remember, everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does is out of His mercy. We see in Surah Hud, which is Surah number 11 of the Holy Quran, Ayah 119. إِلَّا مَنْ رَحِمَ رَبُّكَ وَلِذَلِكَ خَلَقَهُمْ Except those on whom your Lord has mercy. And for this did He create them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, He has mercy and the mercy is for everyone. And why? This is why He created them, because of His mercy. Because of his love for us. Not the other way around. So don't, let us not forget that. Tests are a necessary part of life. Some people say because there are tests, because there are difficulties, because there are suffering, they start questioning God. While in reality, they should do the opposite because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us that this life will be a test and you will be tested and there will be difficulty and there will be suffering. لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ we have brought you in this life in difficulty, in trials. أَحَسِبُ النَّاسِ أَنْ يُتْرَكُوا أَنْ يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ Do the people think they'll be left to say we believe and they'll not be tested? That's the whole purpose of this life. So when people see suffering, they might turn away from Allah. While in reality, if there was no suffering, there'll be no purpose to this life. And then we should question, not the other way around. There's a hadith where someone was once making dua. He says, Oh Allah... 
do not bring bala to me, do not bring hardship or difficulty to me. The Imam, one of the Imams of Ahlul Bayt, one of them looked at him and he said, you have just asked Allah for death. He said, how? He said, because this life is created with bala, with difficulty, with testing. You cannot ask for no testing. What you should ask is for an ease of a testing or for the help to endure the testing so you can reach the highest position. Now, number three, is this test a punishment from God? Now, some people think that the test that we are given or the bala or the pun or, or the um, the the difficulty suffering that happens in this world is a punishment from God. Understand this point that even if it was considered a punishment, it's considered out of Allah's mercy. What do I mean? It means there's nothing negative about this punishment because any test that we have in this world is either for two things to either to expiate the sins, as in take away our sins, to remove the sins that we have already made or to elevate us in the status in heaven. So yes, there may be some sins um, that bring bala, that bring bad things, like Allahumma in dua kumayn we read, Allahumma ghfil ya dhunub allati tunzilu bala, that bring down calamities. There are sins that do that. But that's not a bad thing in itself, because any calamity that happens in this life is for two reasons, to either get rid of our sins, to cleanse us, or to purify us and uh, raise our rank. Some people say, but no, the suffering is so much that I cannot handle it. That's not possible. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Allah will not put a burden upon you or I or anyone more than they can handle. If you're going through a difficult time, understand that this is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that you are worthy of this death and you can do it and you can overcome it. You just have to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be patient. Understand that all the prophets were tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, whenever you, you are going through a hard or difficult time, you should always remember the prophets and the, uh, those who are the successors of the prophets, the Imams of the Ahlul Bayt and otherwise, otherwise other people um, within the other prophets and the saints, the holy saints who went through difficult times. Because whatever you're going through, they've been through it before, if not harder than what we've been through. If you've had a son that's kidnapped, know that Ya'qub and you, you know, Yusuf was, ki was kidnapped and he was taken away from Prophet Ya'qub. If you're going through illness and you've lost your wealth, your job, your everything that you had, um, then know that Prophet Ayyub السلام, went through this test also. If you've lost your parents, and every time you get a child after your marriage, you lose your children one after another after another. And then even your beloved wife that you actually love so dearly, you lose her as well. Then remember our Holy Prophet Muhammad wasallam, And he was Habibullah, the most beloved to Allah. And this was the test that he had in this life. Because remember, the more the trials you have, the closer and the more elevated your station is towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So don't think that Allah hates us by this. It's actually the opposite. That's the truth of the situation. So even for example, you find if you, you know, you had Zainab and Imam Hussein alayhi salam who saw their own children being killed in front of them, butchered, infants in front of them. And then when they were asked, what did you see? Imam Hussein would say, Allahumma taqabbal minna hadha al-ghurban. Oh Allah, accept from us this, this test, this sacrifice that we have done for your sake. And Zainab alayhi salam, when she was asked, what do you think what Allah has done with you and your family? She said, I've not seen anything but beauty. Because yes, the outside of it was destruction, was difficulty, was hardship, but the inside was a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and rewards and elevation in the status towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they see anything that comes their way as a form of beauty, though it may hurt, though it may grieve them. Now, is it wrong to feel sad or grieve? No, it's quite the opposite. Griefing, feel sad, crying, these are all natural traits that we should have, but we should not despair of the mercy and kindness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times. They never lost hope, even though they went through the most difficult of situation. Um, now, just a few tips on what we can do um, to keep 
going on basically keep positive during these difficult times always keep positive always remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always remember those of the Ahlul Bayt and the prophets who went before us who went through difficult times and they were the, the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remember the verses inna ma'al usri yusra surely with difficulty there is ease with difficulty there is ease so whenever there is a, a you know a, a problem within it there is some ease there is some sign there is some lesson within it that we can take and some benefit that we can um, take from it as well. Um, and remember the purpose behind it all. And it is for our own development. So for example, you, you might find like a baby inside the womb. When they develop, they start developing limbs such as their legs and their hands. Which when they're in the womb, they're not using it. It's of no benefit to them. But when they come to their next life, which is this life for them these things will be of use, of benefit. So when they're in the womb, they'll think, what's the point of this? It's not much use. Now, the same things happens to us. When we're in this life, it's like we're being in the womb of our mothers. What happens is we'll be tested in certain ways. And for that, we are gaining more patience. We are gaining better traits. We are becoming stronger within ourselves. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to tell us these traits might not mean much here in this life for you. But in the Akhirah, they are very useful and they are necessary and essential to get to the higher stations. And I would just like to end with a, a verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala consoles our, our Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Surah Al-Hijr, Surah number 15, Ayah 97. وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ يُضِيقُ صَدْرُكَ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ And we know your heart becomes constrained. Because of what they say, you become difficult, you become sad because of what they are saying. So praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be of those who are prostrating to Allah. Always return, do dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that will help us in these difficult times.